Cosplay World, we're back with a series. This is actually the second part in that series. If you are not a member of the Armory, check out FinalCosplayCore.com and how to gain access to the entire set and how to support us in all the things that we do. But for right now, we're going to be making some armored boots. <laughs> so. With armor, I am a big fan of PVC sheeting, so uh, with this kind of layered effect, I'm simply going to be cutting out layers of armor. <laughs> and for long straight sections, what I like to do is use a saw or mm, sometimes a box cutter when it's a very, very small section here. You'll probably see me, there's a little tabs uh, in the layering where I'm going to be busting out, yeah, uh, just a box cutter. Um, so, what's going to happen is I'm going to be layering each piece over each other, and to get the most efficient use of material, uh, you'll see that there's a little tab cut out from above, and they match, and they work, they kind of stack together. Once we do layer them over each other, you won't be able to see that. If you want to reinforce that later with a piece underneath, that's fine. But just so that I'm not using kind of twice as much uh, material, I kind of take that into account. They will totally not be visible once we start layering them over each other. Uh, these are going to be the basic plating for the leg sections of the boots. Um, so. I generally start with a boot. Uh, they're, you know, not too difficult to get a hold of, uh, but they are kind of expensive. Oftentimes, it's like 50 or 60 bucks for the high, uh, knee-high boots, or uh, maybe not exactly knee-high boots, but the tall boots. Um, but they are much more. I pre I'm, I prefer them much more over working with a old pair of shoes, just because they're made better. Um, but we will be jointing these boots at the ankle. Uh, the obvious reason is it's kind of a pain in the butt to walk around in uh, rigid, solid boots. Um, I think that if you want more flexibility, you would do the entire boot section in, say, Warbler or Wonderflex. Um, but because I want to look and feel much more ar like armor, I'm working with this more rigid, thicker material, whereas Warbler is uh, about a millimeter and a half, a millimeter-ish thick. These are three millimeters, um, and so have much more oomph to them. Additionally, craft foam is also acceptable uh, with the level of flexibility that you're looking for, but I personally like a PVC for its rigidity here. Um, you'll see I'm using a heat gun to curve the pieces, and what I'm also doing is starting with kind of a template. The first piece that I curve, I'm going to be curving the rest of them over. What happens with making copies of copies or templating templates of templates is that they slowly become less and less accurate. So working with one uh, keeps that from happening uh, and keeps the shape relatively uniform. Uh, you can see that we've also stacked together the layers for the uh, shoe. I believe this is the yeah the, the tip of the shoe here. We've left uh, the ankle and the top of the boot open so that when we do come in with the Volvo and Waterflex sections, they're much more flexible. Um, one thing I do do you see here is any piece that is too big, um, I'm going to be cutting away the extra here, um, just to make sure that it is. Uh, it does fit over the piece. I make them bigger than they need to. It doesn't really hurt me to leave them in an angular piece beforehand because I'm going to have to cut them out anyway. Uh, and I make sure that I have enough space for these screws to mount the armor on. Um, the trick here is to get the screws into the sole of the boot and not through your foot so it kind of needs to get fairly close to the ground but I like to get say two or three millimeters of space between the bottom of the, the armor and the ground because we don't want it scratching or bumping on stairs or things like that with the rigid armor. For things that tend to make contact with the ground or con convention space or stuff like that are going to take more con damage. 
I am gonna switch it up to the warbler. So you'll see that um, at the toe, I'm gonna be making that section warbler. So in case he, the, the person kicks this, um, that it doesn't crack because of course the plastic is much more rigid than the warbler. Um, so here you see we've got several of these armor sections glued together. Um, once we do have them glued together nicely, we're gonna be cleaning them up. Uh, the ankle section is going to be notably uh, less, uh, it's going to have a less diameter than the uh, calf section. So it doesn't need to be, we don't have to use the whole section there. But again, to make sure that the pieces line up and are clean, I'm going to just keep that extra material until it's time to cut it away. Uh, uh, I do like to keep the back end of the armor open just in case you need a bit more wiggle room. We're going to add fasteners to the ankle so that the piece comes together and is held in place. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, and additionally, you'll see the sections just underneath the knee are curved down downwards. Um, it's nice to be able to sit in shoes and boots and armor so that you don't have uh, something pointy sticking in the back of your thigh or inner knee or whatever that part of your body is. Uh, we curve that down or I kind of curve that down so it's more comfortable. Just just something of a little creature comforts. It's not 100% accurate to the art, but I think that's a good sacrifice to be able to walk around more comfortably and be in the uh, costume much longer. Okay. So, here you see um, me filling the sections of the ankle with Warbler. Um, sorry, Wonder Flex in this case. And, it, and we're going to be making these uh, parabolic strips. I uh, pattern out, sorry, I patterned them out beforehand. And um, we're going to be attaching them with uh, screws and eyelets. Um, the glue, the adhesive properties of Warbler are nice, but with. <sighs> With the amount of wiggling, it's very likely they're just going to come loose here. Uh, and you can see I have a template for the tip of the, the toe as well. I'm simply going to be heating that and sticking it on as well, transitioning it from the armor section to the boot. Uh, in most cases, for the, the toe section, because the toe tends to be more reinforced, uh, I can just stick that on and uh, it may get scratched up on the bottom there, uh, but it's not a huge deal. If I want to be nitpicky, I will uh, cut away so that the trim along the tip of the toe is even and not doesn't have those uh, different tabs and layers and such. So, we've spray painted this very, very uh, chromatic gold off camera because uh, it's outside and spray paint isn't too hard to explain. You set something up in a place you or with a mat that you don't care about getting spray paint on, and you let it fly, making sure not to. Ha, ha, um, sorry, making sure not to overdo it and have streaks, especially with the shiny uh, spray paint, uh, because that will show up much more clearly than if you have a matte kind of spray paint. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm adding a brown wash to bring down the gold and to highlight all of the details uh, where the layering is. Uh, this is much more for, say, photography because things that are shiny, uh, the details tend to get kind of, like, they, they kind of get um, lost in, in, the, in the shot, if, especially if you're a flash or things like that. So to bring those out, we're just adding a bit of dark paint to not only make the texture a little bit more interesting, to make those edges much more clear and evident. Um, the, uh, the, the calf sections, sorry, I'm collecting my thoughts here, are not fully detach attached to the boots. They're kind of free floating so that if, say, an accident happens and they fall down, it doesn't uh, catch on, say, your ankle or your knee. Uh, and so it's free to move wherever you go. Also, it's good to just kind of walk around and have that freedom for the piece to slide from down where it needs to go. Um, and if you need to, you can unsnap the back near the ankle and it will add a bit more freedom there. Uh, but here, yep, I'm just going to put them on <laughs> as an example. So yeah, the boot just goes on like any regular boot. and. Uh, 
the trick here is obviously making sure that it's except oh there's that's another reason why I have them um, not attached is if those me uh, metal plates were permanently attached to the boot you couldn't access the zipper on the side yep <laughs> derp, derp 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 obviously that's another good reason for that so you can see that it's open uh, wide uh, I like to start at the ankle where your um, where you're kind of the thinnest and then slowly press it around the edge there um, it's caught on that little buckle from the original boot but we're gonna it's underneath so I didn't feel like cutting away there we are and then just add the snap in the back and you have a good amount of flexibility and it still looks like the plated layered armor section there see it joints fairly well for photos and such but enough flexibility so you can walk around the next section is going to be in the armory it's going to be the breastplate <laughs> very adequately named I guess I don't know I hope you guys check that out thanks for watching good times to all we will be continuing this over on finalcosmicore.com uh, the link to it is in the description